Skyver the center. B.J. Tyler and Terrence Wrencher the guards. Art McDonald, Stan Reynolds, and Mike Wood are the officials. Ralph Willard in his fourth year at Western Kentucky. He is 81 and 41 in those four seasons. A winning percentage of 66.4%. And he is locking horns, if you'll pardon the pun, with an old friend, Tom Penders, in his sixth year at Texas. His record, 131 and 63. He's also been the head coach at Tufts, Columbia, Fordham, and Rhode Island. And we're underway in the red uniforms, Western Kentucky in control. Darren Horn tried to feed it down low, and Terrence Wrencher deflected it. Tyler immediately launched the three. Freeman, the offensive rebound, blocked. Now for Dent, off the mark. So three shots at it. Longhorns couldn't score, and then Darren Horn traveled as he started up the floor. We've already seen how fast-paced this game is going to be. Both teams play the passing lanes very, very well. Still no score. We've played 30 seconds. Reggie Freeman, the pull-up. Save. Excellent play along the sideline by Burdett, and McIver is fouled. Well, they've had four shots in 36 seconds. For those of you just joining us, we're just underway in the fourth and final game of the day here in Wichita. Western Kentucky taking on Texas. Texas, the number six seed in the Midwest. Western Kentucky, the 11 seed. Rich McIver made the first. He's just a 54% free throw shooter. The winner of this one gets Michigan on Saturday. The Longhorns would really like a crack at Michigan because so many of the Wolverines are Texas natives who bypassed the Longhorn program to go to Michigan. Always a recruiting advantage when you can beat the team that has beaten you at one thing or another. And recruiting is something that all coaches like bragging rights about. Chris Robinson was fouled. He's the leading scorer for Western at 14 and a half points per game. The foul was on Reggie Freeman. First foul on Texas. Tom Penders watches Robinson as he makes the first free throw. Chris Robinson is all conference in the Sun Belt. Leading scorer for Western Kentucky. Almost 15 points a game and six rebounds per contest. Second one did not count. Lane violation against the Hilltoppers, Dion Jackson. So we're tied at one. Ralph well, Hillard said he'd prefer that the score stay in the 70s or the low 80s at best. Henders hopes it gets up over 100. Rich McIver scores in close. He is all three Longhorn points, and they lead by two. But with the style that these teams play, we're going to see a lot of points on the board. I think we're going to see a lot of fouls and turnovers. Cephas Button, the senior from Louisville, with the first field goal for the Hilltoppers. Button's the only senior on this Western Kentucky Hilltopper team. Count that one. And Terrence Wrencher will go to the line as Darren Horn is called for the foul. And Ralph Willard goes quickly to his bench. Danielle Macklin, who hasn't practiced much this week. He was kneed during practice on Monday and had a badly swollen testicle. He did participate in the practice today, but sat out many of the drills during their shoot around this afternoon. Three-point play has given Texas a three-point lead. They've played nearly a minute and a half. Michael Fralix. Groin injuries are usually very difficult to recover from, especially if you get a knee or a fall down on the floor. Safest button for another easy score. It's a one-point Texas lead. We played nearly two minutes. 
Robinson got a hand on the pass, and he's ahead of the field. And lays it in. Wrencher hustled back but couldn't catch it. Three points for Robinson. The horns the other way, charging the call against McIver. Now take a look at the quick hands of Chris Robinson, the sophomore out of Macon, Georgia. Tips the ball out to himself and is going to get down and finish this play off with a layup. And on the other end of the court, just great offensive abilities by Texas to try to crash the offensive glass, get inside for the steal, and certainly the high jamming dunk by Rich McIver. And given the injury of which we spoke for Macklin, the courageous play to stand there and take the charge from the six foot nine, 245 pound McIver. Macklin, the freshman, too strong off the glass. Was kept alive by Button, but the toppers could not control. The pull up and score by Roderick Anderson, number 12. Eight, seven, Texas. At this pace, I think Coach Tom Penders of Texas is going to get his wish with a score in the hundreds. Block for death. The defensive player of the year in the Southwest Conference is voted by the coaches with the block. That's a blocking call. Count the bucket for Terrence Wrencher and the fouls on Michael Fralix. Tom Pinder said that Terrence Wrencher has been his most consistent performer all year. You're going to see an excellent defensive effort by Texas inside. Albert Burdett gets his hand on the ball and taking it down on the other end. Nope, we're not going to see that part of it, but good defense, excellent block, nice possession, go down and attack. Wrencher, the junior from the Bronx out of St. Raymond, made the free throw. Darius Hall, who was a starter earlier in the year, checks in, wearing number 32. And he'll inbound. A game at this pace is always within reach with the style that these two teams play. Both teams have really no conscience with taking the three or, or even taking a shot with one against five, two against four. Bad pass by Robinson was intercepted. Texas will try to force the shots up as quickly as they can. Verdette missed the jump hook from inside the free throw line. Fralix got the bounce. The sophomore from Fredonia, Kentucky. Ralph Willard said candidly they really didn't expect that he would be the starting point guard this year. They recruited Jeff Rogers out of junior college to fill that role. But Felix performed better than expected, and Rogers hasn't been able to wrestle that starting point guard job away. Take a look at the field goal shooting by these teams. Western Kentucky is red hot. Texas is getting more shots, which is what they want to do. Roderick Anderson, acrobatic layup. Anderson has the ability to play the point or the shooting guard, but is quick enough to be able to get a shot off anywhere on the floor. Four-point lead for Texas. We played nearly four minutes. Munton underneath, and Macklin was fouled. It was a shooting foul, the personal against B.J. Tyler. His first. B.J. Tyler. When you have the aggressive styles of defense that both these teams play, you can get a lot of backdoor layups. A quick head fake out high, go backdoor, you can get a layup very, very easy. Fralix has gone to the bench, replaced by Kevin Willard. Number 13, son of head coach Ralph Willard. And in this game, each team has a father and son combination. Tom Penders coaches his son, Tommy. Macklin made the first. Just a 54% free throw shooter. Missed the second, wound up in the hands of Terrence Wrencher. Anderson, with great quickness, his pass deflected by Horn, great hustle by Horn to press row, but he couldn't save it. The first time out with 15-53 left of the first half. Texas by three. Playing, that's what happens. You get backdoor play passes, you can also get easy layups. Diver only averages 4.4 points per game. He's already exceeded his average. Good pass by Willard. And Button was fouled as he took it to the goal. 
Seamus Button will go to the line. He's the only senior on this Western Kentucky team, so the future is indeed bright. The Hilltoppers 20 and 10 overall this year. Out of the Sun Belt Conference. They were the regular season champions in the Sun Belt. Last year, they were a surprise as they advanced to the Sweet 16. They had an upset of highly regarded Seton Hall in the second round in Orlando last year. Mitch McIver just picked up his second foul. Munton. Less than a 50-50 proposition when he goes to the line, but he made the first. Fans get very excited when Cephas Button is able to make at least one of his two free throws. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, the second one barely scraped rim. <laughs> so they're excited. Yes, they are. He did make one out of gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> he usually is right around 50% free throw shooter. Deion Jackson back into the ball game for the Hilltoppers. 15 to 11 Texas. Played nearly five minutes. Longhorns come in at 25 and 7 overall. They've won eight in a row and 18 of their last 19. Anderson still in his own is Western Kentucky. And a steal. Venture tried to feed it to the low post and Burdett, and it was swiped by Chris Robinson. Willard, the freshman, went into the backcourt. Aggressive defense by both these teams will force a lot of turnovers. Anderson hollers out the play. Wrencher, and now Anderson. Nice pass, and then Wrencher kicked it back out to Tyler. The zone has been effective. Horn called for a reach-in foul. Might have been on Willard. Horn hoping it is not on him, and it's not. It is on Willard. Texas Longhorns won their first outright Southwest Conference regular season title since 1974 and then won their first tournament championship ever in the 19-year history of the event when they beat Texas A&M in the final. Just four years ago that they made it to the Elite Eight. And Tom Penders thinks this team has that kind of talent. He certainly feels they have that kind of character as well. He's got some talented guards on this team, and B.J. Tyler, Wrencher, and also Roderick Anderson. Both all are multi-talented in that they can play either the point or the shooting guard position. Robinson, the pull-up. Along those lines, Tom Pender said he will run four or five guards in at Western Kentucky, and he said he thinks the Texas guards can dominate, to use his word, the Western Kentucky guards. Well, so far, they are dominating by passing the ball inside to get the Texas Longhorn inside game operating. And when that is not there, they're looking to shoot the ball from the perimeter. Willard hit the deck and lost the ball. The last Texas basket by Tremaine Wingfield, number three, who's just come in for the Horns. Texas by six. 13-40 left in the first half. Tremaine Wingfield started his college career at the University of Louisville. Anderson missed a three-point try. Robinson with the rebound. Robinson, a look-away pass. He got it back and scored. After Darius Hall was stripped, Chris Robinson, the sophomore from Macon, Georgia, has seven. Ralph Willard is trying to turn up the volume on the offensive end, get down and get a high percentage shot. And on defense, slow Texas down just enough that they can control the inside. Wingfield missed the follow, the shot by Burdett. Willard trapped in front of the Western bench, goes the long ball to Robinson. Horn, too hot to handle. He was trying to feed Deion Jackson. It went sailing past Jackson. Cephas Bunton returns for Western. And Michael Fralix is also back in. You expect turnovers in this game with the trapping and pressing style employed by each team and Western Kentucky has already handed it over seven times. 
Wisconsin off to the early lead. They barely eked into the tournament. Florida, a big favorite against James Madison. Alabama and Providence have gone back and forth. Connecticut, a big winner earlier after an early challenge from Ryder. George Washington beat UAB. Penn wins one for the Ivy League. That shouldn't surprise many who saw Penn play this year. Tremendous year by Penn. And it will continue, at least for another day. Fralix for three. Tyler pushes. DJ averages 23 points per game. Picks it out to the line. Anderson hoists another. And did not get the bounce. Burdett all over the glass. And the finger roll went down for Albert. Excellent athletic ability by Albert Burdett. 6'8", 230 out of Austin, Texas. He hangs in the air and goes underneath the arm of the defender to be able to kiss off the glass. Six-point lead for Texas. The longest, or largest, rather, for the Horns. Robinson scores from the lane to cut the lead back down to four. Robinson is nine of the 17. He'll top the points. Blocked the call. Jackson didn't quite get to the baseline. Going to take a this, look at this excellent athletic, ins athletic ability inside by Albert Burdett as he waits for the defender to go by and still uses a rim to get the ball to go down. The Longhorns up by four. Chris's dad, Walter Daniels, former All-SEC player at Georgia in the mid-70s. Kevin Willard missed the shot, but Western will inbound. Tom Pender said he, as you talked about a few minutes ago, continue to run different players at the guards from Western Kentucky. Make them pick up their dribble, make them take bad shots with a defender in their face. And they said his guards could dominate the Western Kentucky guards, and at the moment the guard scoring is 12 points for Texas and two points from Hilltopper guards. So they've done their job. And Tyler the steal. Willard trying to take it back. Off glass, Tyler Shore with it. Tyler's the left-hand tip wouldn't go. Robinson, another rebound. Three rebounds for Robinson. Western Kentucky trails by four. This is the 15th appearance of the NCAA tournament for Western Kentucky. Last year lost to Florida State in overtime in the Sweet 16 in Charlotte. Willard, high arcing three, rebounded by Roderick Anderson. Anderson struggled with injuries early in the season. Really picked his play up once he got healthy. Burdett, another offensive rebound, and he was fouled on the way up. Wisconsin still leading Cincinnati. That's a surprise to many. Cincinnati played so well in the Great Midwest Tournament on its own floor, and Wisconsin didn't play too well the second half of the year. Yeah, but Wisconsin's a good basketball team. They have a great center inside in Rasheed Griffith and also have some outstanding outside shooters. Cincinnati's a young team. A lot of freshmen dominate that lineup. Albert Burdett at the free throw line for two, the senior from Austin, Texas. Social work major at UT. And his dad has been around the Longhorn Athletic Program for a long time. Bubba Burdett has been the chef in the Longhorn Athletic Dining Hall for the last 18 years. Burdett wants to be on the court for 40 minutes. He said he gets upset when the coach takes him out of the game, even for a brief rest. Whistle after Robinson fielded the miss. And it's a lane violation, apparently, against Robinson. <laughs> and Ralph Willard was a bit perplexed by the call. Had a a slew of lane violations called today here in Wichita. Players are just being aggressive, trying to get that little bit of an edge. Well, Burdett with another chance, and he capitalizes. Put Texas back up by six, nearly midway through the first half. The Hilltoppers handle the press and then throw it away. Dealt with the difficult part, but then Buttons bounce pass to the wing when skipping by Robinson. Texas cold at the moment, but they're still leading by six. Texas is able to get off more shots, and they're also doing a good job of rebounding, getting second shot opportunities from their offensive rebounds. Wrencher tried to dribble through traffic and managed to escape with the ball. 18 seconds on the shot clock. 
Coach Pender says that Wrencher has been the most solid all-around player all year long for Texas. Fralix had the rebound and lost it on the floor. Great effort by Roderick Anderson. Quickness of the Longhorns, keeping possession of the ball in their front court. Tony Watson has come into the game. He has the ball, wearing number 22 for the Horns. Long three off the rim as Wrencher launched one from well beyond the arc. Out of bounds off Burdett, says the official Mike Wood. Susie Penders, Mrs. Tom Penders on the right with daughter Sonny alongside. And we haven't seen Tommy Penders in the game yet. He'll likely get off the bench before this one is finished. Both coaches said if their sons weren't their sons, they'd play more. And I agree with that because it's a difficult situation for a son to try to play for his dad and also incorporate his, his self into the rest of the team. You, you get in the game, guys sometimes say you're, being, you're playing the favorite, but both of these kids are good ball players. Mm -hmm. There's Tommy Penders. In the middle of your picture with the towel, both he and Jesse Sandstead have been growing goatees during this winning streak. And Tommy Pender's dad, Tom, has been wearing the same blue shirt with the white collar during this winning streak. He said he's always been a white shirt, white collar guy throughout his coaching career, but tried the blue shirt with the white collar 16 games ago when the Longhorns are 15 to 1. So he's not changing the shirt. Hopefully it has been out to the cleaner once or twice. <laughs> but coaches are superstitious. Yes. We talked about this earlier today. If Which something could add to the possibility that it hasn't been out to the cleaners. <laughs> and also that his son has the go team. Tyler threw up an air ball handled by Funton. Texas by four. Western Kentucky with the ball. Under nine minutes left in the first half. Horn lost it with the behind the back dribble. <laughs> well, this is what we expected. <laughs> it isn't always going to be pretty, but it should be entertaining. Watson called for the foul during the scramble. What appears to be helter-skelter by both these teams, they're both very much under control because this is their style. You overplay, you're aggressive, you get tip-aways, you get steals, you come up with loose balls. Sometimes you will make bad passes, but you just try to create enough havoc for your opponent that you are in control of the game. Each team has committed six fouls, so we'll have shooting the rest of the way. Nice shot by Robinson. He pulled up just inside the foul line, and the Hilltoppers are within two. And their fans, seated behind us, are making noise for the first time tonight. The Hilltoppers are getting the ball inside where they want, and they're also slowing down the Texas Longhorns just enough that they are in control of this game at the moment, even though they're behind by two points. Anderson hits the jumper from just inside the free throw line. Roderick has six. Roderick Anderson was a junior college All-American at Angelina Junior College. Jermaine Wingfield with the foul. Texas is a little bit deeper than Western Kentucky, so even though Western is handling the press pretty well, Tom Penders hopes that eventually he's going to accomplish his goal of wearing down the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. And even though his players do get in foul trouble, which is going to happen because they are playing such an aggressive style, he will continue to go into the bench. Nine, ten, sometimes. He said he even plays 11, 12, 13 players at some point. Some point. Well, we have nine players with the Longhorns who have scored at least 100 points this year. It's a lot of points for a lot of players. Robinson made the first. He has 12 of the 22. Hilltopper points. This is five out of six from the line. <laughs> Texas with the ball, leading by three. Tyler, long three. It spins out and into the hands of Fralix. Ralph Willard, the Western coach, said NBA scouts told him that D.J. Tyler would be the first guard selected in the NBA draft. 
If Jason Kidd doesn't come out, Kidd indicated to Jim Gray earlier today on CBS that he plans to stay at Cal after the loss today to Wisconsin Green Bay. I would be surprised if Jason Kidd stays in school. That's just my opinion from watching his past. But B.J. Tyler is a tremendous guard, and I think he will go very high in the NBA draft. That was easy for Darius Hall, the junior from Detroit, Michigan, out of Northwestern High School, has four. And it's back to a one-point lead for the Longhorns. The Hilltoppers from Western Kentucky are still getting the ball down inside the throat of the defense of Texas, getting the high-percentage shots. Western Kentucky very quietly has been one of the great programs in college basketball history. They beat Louisiana Tech on February 10th. Whoa! Nothing quiet about the alley-oop for Dett to finish off the feed from Tyler. That win was the 1300th in the history of the Hilltopper program. Western Kentucky one of only 13 schools in college basketball with 1300 wins or more. Horn, well off the mark with the shot. Is rebounded by Watson. Tyler, NBA three, front rimmed it. Scramble for the ball, won by Western's Darius Hall. Now Button was fouled. Scratching and falling. <laughs> that kind of sums up the first half for both of these teams. B.J. Tyler making eye contact with Albert Burden underneath. Get the ball up high. Make the contact. Get the finish on the play. Continue to get behind the defense. <laughs> Foul was on Gerald Houston, who just checked into the game his first. Longhorns are over the limit. Cephas Button at the line. The name Button sounds familiar to fans who follow basketball in the state of Kentucky. It should. Cephas had two uncles, Stanley and Bill, who played at Louisville in the early 70s. Another uncle, Granville, is one of Western Kentucky's all-time leading rebounders. Mm. Missed the second. Texas ball. The Longhorns lead by two. We'll be back in just a moment. Western Kentucky has tightened up their defense and not allowing Texas to get second and third chance shot opportunities. The zone has caused the Longhorns some problems in being able to get a shot off. Anderson fouled. He's indicating to the official that he was attempting a shot. Ralph Willard. Former assistant to Rick Pitino, both the New York Knicks and the Kentucky Wildcats. And Ralph and Rick Pitino went to the same high school. Ralph's a little bit older, had gone on to college by the time Pitino went to St. Dominic's in Oyster Bay, New York. As a matter of fact, Ralph helped send Rick Pitino to that high school. So he came back from Holy Cross on a break, was playing some basketball in a park on Long Island, and saw, and we're quoting, an obnoxious, chubby little kid. He turned out to be Rick Pitino. <laughs> Went back to a priest friend of his at his alma mater, St. Dominic, said, hey, you ought to check out this kid Pitino. Rick wound up going there and then went by a scholarship to UMass. Willard and Pitino have been friends ever since. Rick Pitino was an excellent basketball player in college and also in high school. Had a nickname of the Rifle because mm -hmm. he was such a good shooter. And, of course, Patino, a proud alum of the University of Massachusetts. We will undoubtedly be happy about the Minutemen and their victory today here over Southwest Texas. Until he has to play them. Count it. Darius Hall followed up the miss of the three-pointer by Willard. And he'll go to the line. Western Kentucky is getting back in this game, one by playing great defense, also by working without the ball. Darius Hall is going to come up with this loose ball rebound, get the stick back, and also get to the foul line, but he is working hard inside of Texas's defense. Two fouls on Gerald Houston. The free throw ties the game at 28. Danielle Mecklen back in for Chris Robinson. Tie game, 5.35 left in the first half. Tyler goes by Willard. Too strong with the left hand. 
Western Kentucky ball. Guards from Texas seem to be a little bit frustrated not being able to get shots off. Tyler Wrencher and also Roderick Anderson, they're trying to force the ball inside a little bit. If they make good passes, keep good spacing, throw it inside, get it back out, they have a chance to get those shots off without a defender in their face. Kevin Willard's pass went right through Danielle Macklin. Nothing wrong with the pass. Macklin couldn't handle it. Danielle, a freshman from Louisville. And the fact that Western Kentucky was able to recruit him shows the progress the program is making. Ralph Willard said off last year's success, they were able to recruit Macklin. It's the first time they've gone head to head inside Kentucky for big time recruit and won the battle with Louisville. Anderson showing his frustration with not being able to score by shooting about five steps behind the three-point line. Still tied at 28. They look to trap in the half court, and Willard turned it over. Tyler the lob a little bit too high. Burdett couldn't get it. Six turnovers committed by Texas. Was wide open, missed the three. Texas. Was wide open, missed the three. Offensive rebound, Macklin. Willard open. Another three. Got it. First points for Kevin Willard, the freshman from Bowling Green, Kentucky, which is the home of Western Kentucky University. Also the home of the Corvette automobile. Tyler missed the three, but Texas will keep it. 3.54 left in the first half. The Hilltoppers have assumed Maryland won the first game here behind Joe Smith's 29 points. Lou Rowe had 21 in the UMass win. And Michigan went to overtime to beat Pepperdine. Dewan Howard had 28 points and nine rebounds. All eight points in overtime for Michigan were from the free throw line. Western Kentucky with the lead for the first time since it was seven to six. Texas has made only three of its last 19 shots. They are 0 for 8 from beyond the three-point line. B.J. Tyler in the game is 0 for 9 from the floor. He has only two points, both from the line. The Hilltoppers are doing an excellent job of defending the perimeter, not allowing Texas to get open for those shots, the Texas guards to get open. Gerald Houston with a two-point field goal. He averages four points a game. He's a senior from Atlanta. Lost the handle as he tried to pass. Tyler lays it in. First field goal of the night for B.J. Tyler. You will see Kevin Willard from time to time try to dribble out of a trap, an ill-advised situation where he needs to look to pass. Fralix hit the runner. Back and forth we go. Western Kentucky with a one-point lead. Less than three minutes left in the first half. Burdett, short with it. Rebound, Macklin. And apparently he got poked in the eye. The officials give him a moment. He did get poked in the eye. Excellent hustle by the Texas Longhorns. B.J. Tyler is going to come up with this loose ball steal and get out on the break. But just good, quick hands. They play the passing lanes very well and like to get the ball into the hands of their guards who can finish the plays. Macklin has gone out of the game. Beyond Jackson inbound. Jackson Horn, Robinson, Willard, and Hall, the fivesome for the Hilltopper. Anderson with Wrencher, Tyler, Houston, and Burdett, and they watched Darius Hall take it to the goal uncontested. Wrencher off to Burdett. He's fouled. Count it. Fouls on Kevin Willard. I'm going to take a look at Western Kentucky. Darren Horn actually sets this play up. Going to receive the ball from Willard with a little bit of penetration. Take the defense dish off to Darian Horn to get that easy, uncontested layup. Michael Fralix returns. 
Texas trying to get the ball down inside and making the good penetration, not shooting the ball very well from the outside, but get it to Albert Burnett. He can finish the play down inside. 62% free throw shooter is Burnett. He was named to the Southwest Conference All-Tournament team. Averaged 18 points and nine rebounds in the three Longhorn wins in the Southwest Conference Tournament. Of course, Texas, in the not-too-distant future, beginning to what was the Big 8. Now the Big 12, Fralix, a Big 3. Excellent penetration by the Hilltoppers to be able to take the defense down on the baseline, pitch it back outside. You can get the open shot. Texas still isn't certain when its basketball team will officially change conferences. They still need to work out the details. Kick ball and a fresh 35 on the shot clock. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg will take you for live look-ins at other active first-round action, plus scores and highlights of all of the day's games. Pennzoil at the half in a minute and a half. Freeman. Missed the three-pointer. It was tracked down by Deion Jackson. Hilltoppers with a four-point lead. Robinson launches a three. It spins out. Paul Travel after gathering in the rebound. Excellent hustle by the Hilltoppers that stay and continue to fight after the loose balls. Unfortunately, they come up with a travel, but it's a scrappy basketball team that does not give up. down to a minute left in the first half. Wrencher, bounce pass, Burnett, short with it. Another rebound for Darius Hall. Trouble in the backcourt for Fralix. He got it to Horn, who airmailed Jackson. Talk about the fancy plays, the plays that most coaches don't like to see. Dribble between your leg, behind your back, in traffic. That is another play that coaches do not like to see because it gives the defense a chance to try to get in and commit and usually get a flick away if they don't come away with a clean steal. Short is Freeman. Pouring the rebound. And he was fouled as he hit the deck. And he'll go to the line with both teams over the limit. Tom Pender's team now 0 for 10 from three-point range. Uh, James Madison left the Drizel's club battling Florida all the way. Alabama widening its lead over Providence. Darren Horn at the line, the junior from Lexington, Kentucky, played high school basketball with... Ralph Willard Sons chose Western Kentucky over Virginia and Minnesota. Darren played with son Keith Willard, who's now a sophomore guard at Wagner College in Staten Island, New York. Ralph said one of the benefits of Kevin Willard being on the team is at least he gets to see his son play. He has never seen Keith play a college basketball game. Tom Penders and his staff are going to have their hands full at halftime trying to figure out how to penetrate this Western Kentucky zone defense. Shot clock is off. Usually the Longhorns don't worry about the shot clock, but they will here. They'll run it down for the final shot of the half. They're down by six. This is the largest Western Kentucky lead of the game. Anderson scores just before the buzzer. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers 40 and the Texas Longhorns 36. Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg will be along with Pennzoil at the half after this message. We've got to see his team turn it around. Thank you, Jim. And while you're the principal defender, and the guard play improved considerably as Dan Cross and Craig Brown combined for 31 points.
in the backcourt, and that's two above their season's average. So an outstanding day of basketball here at the Nassau Coliseum. As many people were shocked to see an impressive performance, as I mentioned before, by Pennsylvania. They saw a rider hang in for about three quarters of the game against Connecticut before the talented Huskies turned it on. And James Madison play an outstanding game in pushing Florida to the limit before falling 64-62. Well, it's been a long day, and we certainly like to thank a lot of people who have had a major hand in this, especially the technical staff, the senior members, Stu Meyer, our field technical manager, Jeff Ringel, our technical director, and Bob Siderman in audio, and the rest of the outstanding crew that provided the pictures and everything else for us. And, of course, our producer, Bob Dekas, our director, Bob Fishman, Pete Machesca, our ADAP, and Ken Mack, our broadcast associate. Evan, the dominantly again zone. Chris Robinson scores. He leads all scores with 14 points. McIver. It certainly didn't help Texas when McIver got the two quick fouls in the first half and had to go to the bench. Not at all, because Tom Pender is going to go in deeper to his bench to try to get more players involved. With 16 and a half minutes left in the second half, Western Kentucky, the 11 seed in the Midwest region, leading the 6 seed Texas by four points. Texas with an eight-game winning streak on the line. Fralix. And now Darren Horn into the lane. Nice pass. Deion Jackson, the slam dunk. Western Kentucky still being able to get the ball inside, get the penetration and the dish in for the layups. The dunk answered by a three for Roderick Anderson. He has 15 points. Western Kentucky by three. Fralix stripped by Anderson. And the lay-in. The Longhorns within one. Five straight points for Roderick Anderson. He is 17 in the game. Texas getting back in with the quick hands and the quick anticipation of their guards. Now starting to look to be a lot more assertive, shooting the ball from the outside and get the tip aways and the steals on defense. Tom Pender says this is the best defensive team he's had in the six years at UT. They have four players to the horns with 50 or more steals. Fralix missed the three. Jackson had the offensive rebound and it was knocked out of bounds. We'll be back in just a moment. Region. Winner of this one gets Michigan on Saturday. This one has been closely contested throughout. And at the moment, it's Western Kentucky with the ball and a one-point lead. Western Kentucky shot the ball very well the first half. Interior getting easy layups just like that. Texas had a difficult time trying to figure out the zone defense to get the shots they wanted from the perimeter. Robinson's bucket answered by the slam by Rich McIver, the transfer from the University of Michigan. If Texas wins, he'll be playing against his former mates here on Saturday. The steal. Long pass by Burdett. The lay-in by Wrencher. And Texas has reclaimed the lead. Texas has gotten back in this game down by six and a half by playing good aggressive defense. First time Texas has led since three minutes. With 14, 24 remaining, Texas has a one-point lead. Western Kentucky trying to inbound. Robinson having trouble. Finally got it in Darren Horn. He is trapped immediately. Got it to Kevin Willard. Willard idolizes Billy Donovan, the former standout at Providence in their final four team. Here's Billy Donovan's old Providence shorts under his shorts. Anderson the lay-in and the foul. 19 points for Roderick Anderson. Excellent job on the defensive end by Texas to come up with the steal. And Roderick Anderson goes right into initiating the contact of Darius Hall to draw that foul and showing that he is really pumped up now about getting the Longhorns back into the lead. Anderson had a tough start to the year physically. 
had an ankle problem and a hamstring problem. And that was following up knee surgery in September. But once he got healthy and B.J. Tyler joined the team in September, the Longhorns have played as well as any team in the country. Horn double teamed and stripped. Texas on a run. They lead by four and they have it back. 14 minutes remaining. Tyler long for three. Race to the corner. Saved a couple of times by the Hilltoppers. Horn blocked. Big block by Burdett. And Fralich took it away right in front of the Texas bench. He walked the tightrope. They hand it back to McIver. <laughs> What a sequence. Foul. Won't go. That's a fitting end to the sequence. A foul with a shot that would not go in. Well, here's Susie Penders watching that sequence. And you can imagine her range of oops. And there they go the other way. And it won't be long before she's happy again. Oh. Well, she stayed kind of dour there. Nope, then she got happy. <laughs> Both these teams are trying to make one extra pass to get inside to get the layup or the high percentage shot and keep the crowd pumped up in this game. And we had three or four consecutive turnovers by just trying to make the fancy play or the play that is trying to be just a little bit too much emotion, a little bit too much mustard on it. Darius Hall made the first. Just a 54% free throw shooter. Texas still on a 12 to 3 run over the last three and a half minutes. Hall was a starter at the beginning of the year, became the sixth man when Deion Jackson moved into the starting lineup, and that really coincided with Western Kentucky's late season surge that saw them win 13 of the last 16 after getting off to a 7 and 7 start. But they played some tough non conference competition in the early season played North Carolina at North Carolina played at Louisville played Indiana and UAB outside of the Sun Belt two on one Anderson laid it in he has 22 Texas is now trying to figure out and have pretty much figured out what they need to do to get Western Kentucky out of that zone, which is to play good defense, and when they get their hands on the ball, look to attack the basket. Tyler tried to go behind the back and was lucky that it wound up with Wrencher. McIver kept it alive. And McIver is called for the foul. The 22 points tonight for Roderick Anderson, the career high. We talked about the Longhorns and their defense. They played so much more aggressively the second half. In the game to this point, they have forced 22 turnovers by Western Kentucky, and they themselves only have eight in this game. A little one-sided there. Indeed it is. McIver on the bench with four fouls. Just the third foul this half against Texas, and Western Kentucky has only been whistled for two. We've played just over seven minutes since halftime. Texas was down four at the break. They're up four with 12.55 remaining. Felix guarded tightly by Anderson. Anderson's picked up the slack for B.J. Tyler. He's had an off night tonight. Horn, the pull-up. Was short with it. Anderson, another rebound. Which it's not surprising that Western would do a great job on Tyler. Folks might remember they did a terrific job on Anthony Hardaway of Memphis State in the first round game last year. The upset win over the Tigers. They didn't do as good a job that time on B.J. as he knocked home a three. Largest lead for Texas, seven points. B.J. Tyler is now starting to look for the jump shot. Look for that outside three-point shot, averaging 23 points a game. Fralix answered Tyler's three with one of his own. Ten points for the sophomore from Fredonia, Kentucky, out of Caldwell County High School, where he's the all-time leading scorer. Verdette with the score for Texas. He has 12, and a foul called on B.J. Tyler. His third. 
Of course, Longhorn fans know the story. B.J. Tyler admitted himself to the John Lucas Center in Houston in August to deal with a substance abuse problem. Texas started the season without B.J. They went two and two with Roderick Anderson playing point guard on the sprained ankle and a strained hamstring. And Tom Penders trying to mesh in transfers to Maine Wingfield and Rich McIver. Albert Bridget missed the final 16 games of last year. When Tyler came back, Anderson got healthy. And the Longhorns have lost only once since that took place. Fralix has 12. Western down by four. 11-15 remaining here in Wichita. NBA three! Roderick Anderson. That would have been well beyond the NBA line. A career-high 25. Anderson is now starting to play with a lot of confidence. We've seen him come down with defensive rebounds, steals, tip aways, and finish on the offensive end. He has to be. B.J. Tyler. Roderick Anderson, I'm sorry, three or four steps behind the three-point arc. Excellent range. Number 22, 21. Career high 25 points and still 11 minutes remaining here. DJ Tyler's going to take a seat on the Texas bench. Wow, Cincinnati has come from behind to take the lead. That was the first game of the day here in Wichita, Maryland. The winner, UMass, beat Southwest Texas State, and Michigan in overtime survived the scare from Pepperdine. If you missed that game, the waves of Pepperdine had the last possession of regulation time in a tie game, but the shot attempt at the buzzer was blocked. Darren Horn, the free throw shooter, after the second foul committed by Tony Watson. Horn made the first. We have to look out for Darren Horn. He was a journalism major, says he wants to be a sports broadcaster <laughs> or a sports writer. When he graduates from Western Kentucky, he really should set his sights a little higher, I think. <laughs> Would you think? <laughs> Comes out of a very good basketball program, Tate's Creek High School in Lexington, Kentucky. Six-point lead for Texas as we approach the midpoint of the second half. Watson. They go inside. Burdett tried to step back, and Deion Jackson reached in to strip him. Jackson runs the floor and couldn't handle the pass. He had good hands at one end and bad hands at the other. Nice job by Michael Freelix looking up court, trying to get that easy layup, but unable to come up with the ball. If you're going to go out front and wave your hand in the air, you have to be able to at least maintain possession and catch the ball. 23 turnovers for Western Kentucky. Burdett. Knocks it in from beyond the free throw line. The lead is eight. Texas, after a prolonged shooting slump in this game, starting to find the range again and starting to pull away. Burdett's doing a good job on both ends of the floor, playing great defense, getting some steals, rebounding, and now he's looking to put the ball in the basket. Fralix gave it up. Now Warren has it from Jackson. No shot. Marty McDonald saying the foul on Roderick Anderson was before the shot. Two fouls on Anderson. And the six team foul, so not yet a shooting situation. Tom Penders and Ralph Willard played against each other in college when Penders was at Connecticut on a terrific Husky team and Willard was at Holy Cross. And Ralph Willard said, he ate Penders up. He had 18 <laughs> points as Holy Cross upset Connecticut, one of only two losses that year for the Huskies. He said Tom Penders never guarded anyone. <laughs> Penders was a terrific player, and Ralph Willard was really a bench player. Now, but Penders said Willard wasn't even in the scouting report. He said, who's this guy who just scored 18 points against us? Penders says if Toby Kimball was in the lineup and not injured that night, Connecticut would have handled Holy Cross easily. <laughs> You saw the graphic on the screen. Western Kentucky has 23 turnovers and 22 field goals. Still a six-point game. And a whistle. The crowd didn't like it. Anderson called for another foul, his third, as he tried to execute the steal. That had Tom Penders scratching his head. It is a bonus situation. 
Tom Kenders was a terrific baseball player after he came out of the University of Connecticut. He was in the Cleveland Indians organization as a third baseman, made it to the double-A level before deciding to pursue a career in basketball coaching. Fralix, run into the one and one. 13 points for Fralix. That's his average for the season. And he gets the favorable bounce on the second. The Hilltoppers hanging in there down by four. We tick down to nine minutes remaining here in Wichita. I think the Hilltoppers are going to have to make some free throws. Only shoot 64% as a team. In the bonus situation, they're going to have to make some down the stretch. Verdette having a big night. He has 16 points. The guards from Texas are now starting to penetrate a little bit more, and they're looking to pitch out. Tyler's not able to hit the shot. Albert Burdett is stepping up very large. Fralix, he's been the man of late, not that time. Wingfield corralled the rebound, and then he was fouled. Just the third foul against the Hilltoppers in this half. It's on Cephas Bunton. Here's the menu tomorrow in the first round. Liberty, the 16th seed in the East, takes on North Carolina. Southwest Louisiana against Marquette and New Mexico State and Oklahoma State. That's the early action. Later in the afternoon, Tennessee State, Kentucky, Tulsa, UCLA, BC, and Washington State, New Mexico, and Virginia. Burdett, short that time. Dead ball rebound taken in by Fralix. He was sent sprawling. And B.J. Tyler whistled for the foul. Burdett tried to have the foul called to him by raising his hand, but the officials did not go for it. Tomorrow night, more action. Georgetown in the Illini, Boise State in Louisville, Drexel and Temple in the Battle of Philadelphia, Texas Southern and Duke. And they're not finished yet. Ohio U and Indiana, treat for many folks around the country to watch Gary Trent of the Bobcats, one of the best players in the country that very few have heard of. Seton Hall in Michigan State, Southern Illinois, Minnesota, North Carolina a and and the one seed Arkansas tomorrow night. I like the Razorbacks. I still think they're an exciting basketball team. Very young team. They have a young nucleus, but Nolan Richardson and his staff have done a tremendous job to get that team up to the level of being recognized in the top five in the country this year. Fralix made the first and the second. And the Texas lead is four with 8.21 remaining. E.J. Tyler on the bench with his four fouls. So it's Anderson, Wingfield, Burdett, Freeman, and Wrencher on the floor for Texas. This is Freeman. I have to admire Reggie Freeman. He accepted a challenge from a local TV station. Foul called as Anderson passed on. Local TV station in Austin wanted to have a three-point shooting contest between a member of the Longhorn men's team and Danielle Viglione, who plays for the Longhorn women's team. She's one of the best three throw uh, three point shooters rather in the country in women's basketball. They asked B.J. Tyler first. He said, "No way, I'm going to get involved with that." Terrence Wrencher said, "No." Reggie Freeman, the freshman, said, "Sure, I'll do it." So the TV station came over. They taped the three point shooting contest, and Freeman beat Danielle Viglione. He made nine out of 15, and Danielle made eight. There's a three for Wrencher. Texas by seven, 14 points for Terrence Wrencher. You know, this pressure has to be wearing down Western Kentucky. Just watching this, it makes you tired. I think it is wearing him down. Western is still back in that zone, and for Texas to maintain this lead, they're going to have to continue to penetrate, take the defense inside, and pitch it back out. They like shooting the ball from long range, shoot about 33% as a team, and that's how they can get back in the game. If they get it out on the wing, the defense comes out, then look back inside again. First foul on Terrence Wrenching. Texas was 0 for 10 in the first half from three-point land. They were six out of nine from three in the second half. Danielle Macklin, the nephew of Rudy Macklin, All-American at LSU in the early 80s. He's out of Pleasure Ridge Park High School in Louisville. They went 32-3 and three last year as 
Macklin led them with 21 points and 13 rebounds a game. Didn't get the roll in the second one. Wingfield, the rebound. Still Longhorns by six, make it eight. Burnett, the finish off the perfect fade from Anderson. Texas is doing an outstanding job of, one, getting the penetration, but also the guards are looking with their head up to get the ball inside. High arcing shot by Kevin Willard. Five points for Willard. Texas by six, under seven minutes remaining. One of the few times tonight, Texas is in no hurry to shoot. Foul as Roderick Anderson tried to drive. He was bumped. And the foul is on Danielle Mecklen. His first. The Horns flying high with a six-point lead. What you six now in a big part of the turnaround. They're three-point shooting. 0 for 10 in the first half, 6 for 9 this half from beyond the arc. The Horns have the ball. It's a zone again. And Freeman goes right through it. First points of the game for the freshman from the Bronx out of Rice High School. Texas is getting the penetration that they want, and you made a point a couple of moments ago about Western Kentucky now starting to get fatigued by all the pressure that Texas has been applying. It is now starting to take effect. No basket, offensive foul called against Chris Robinson. His second foul, apparently he cleared out the defender. Good Texas just gonna get the penetration, get inside behind the defense, make a quick pass. Reggie Freeman, the recipient, getting the easy layup. Michael Fralix has returned for the Hilltoppers. Texas starting to pull away, thanks in large part to the mounting Western Kentucky turnover total. Defensive pressure wearing them down. E.J. Tyler is still on the bench with his four fouls. Wrencher with 15 on the shot clock, bounce pass. Couldn't be handled by Burdett. It was picked up by Cephas Bunton. Fralix and Horn, the backcourt for Western. Jackson, Martin, and Robinson, the frontcourt, the starting five on the floor for the Hilltoppers with five and a half remaining. Ralph Willard said if it gets into the 90s, we're in trouble. Texas is certainly on a pace to get into the 90s with 77 points on the board and 520 remaining. They double team and get the steal. Robinson a little bit out of control along the end line, but blocking the call against Anderson. His fourth foul, so Tyler is on the bench with four, and now Roderick Anderson, who's had the best night of his career, has four. Chris Robinson for Western Kentucky was very effective the first half, had 12 points, five out of seven from the field. So far in the second half has not been as effective on the offensive end, only four points, and hasn't really looked for his shot. I think he's now starting to show some fatigue from the pressure of the guards, the excellent guard play by Texas. Robinson. Front rim the first, perhaps a sign of fatigue. Tyler back in with his four fouls. And Anderson takes a seat with his four person. Mr. Robinson said he really benefited from playing against Darnell Mee in practice all of last year. Me a great defender, now in the NBA with the Denver Nuggets. Still another lane violation, so Robinson has another free throw. Lane violation on Texas. And he takes advantage. Texas by seven. Nearing five minutes remaining here in Wichita. DJ Tyler is a young man who has looked for to, looked upon to score for Texas, but he hasn't been able to do that, but he is still an excellent leader out there on the court. Has been able to get some penetration and get the dish off. Burdett with the slam dunk. 20 for Albert Burdett. 
The lead is back to nine. Texas is shooting 68% from the floor in the second half. D.J. Tyler with only seven points, but that was his ninth assist in this game. Felix missed the three. Bunt the offensive rebound. Stripped by Wrencher. Out of bounds off Bunton. There is great concern in Bowling Green, Kentucky, that this could well be the last game for Ralph Willard, his coach of the Hilltoppers. His name comes up for virtually every vacancy. The job that he has done. Freeman the lay-in. And it's starting to get away from the Hilltoppers. Texas by 11. Coming down to four minutes remaining. Willard has been particularly linked of late to the Providence job, which isn't even open, although the worst kept secret of the country might be that Rick Barnes is leaving Providence to go to Clemson. Robinson, a big three. They had to have it. Providence has lost, and that is probably the last game for Rick Barnes as the PC coach. A lot of coaching jobs opening. Wingfield foul. Of course, Ralph Willard, formerly an assistant coach in the Big East. He is from the Northeast, from Long Island, New York. And a couple of days ago, the New York Post had a story that Willard will likely be the next Providence coach. And we spoke with Ralph yesterday. He says he has not spoken to Providence. There's Dottie Willard, his wife. Wingfield missed the first. Of course, we don't know anything for certain, obviously. Right. If I had to guess, I'd say Rick Barnes is at Clemson and Ralph Willard is at Providence soon. Oh, Rolly Massimino's name's coming up for the Providence position also. Yes. So a lot of rumors are going to take place over the next couple of weeks about these vacant positions. Two misses by Wingfield. And a score at the other end by Robinson. So all of a sudden, it's back down to six. Wrencher beat the pressure and then sent it back toward midcourt. And Texas will look to run some clock with 3.13 remaining. 20 seconds on the shot clock. The Longhorns lead by six. Texas is not a very good half-court team. They like the fast pace. They like the fact that they can get easy hoops in transition. Everybody gets a chance to touch the ball. Verdet didn't get the bounce. Freeman had it deflected by Horn. Wingfield, no foul. Western has the ball back down by six. Got a chance to cut deeper into this lead. Felix for three. Off the back rim. Freeman could have let it go out of bounds. He did not. And is whistled for traveling. Big break for the Hilltoppers as they try to fight back from a six-point deficit. We're back following the traveling call with the ball. The Hilltoppers have two timeouts left. The Longhorns have three. Both teams in the bonus situation. The arrow favors the Hilltoppers. They go right down low to Darius Hall. He got it out to Fralix. Horn right down the lane, off glass. Wouldn't roll in. But he'll go to the line for two. Excellent penetration by Western Kentucky's Darren Horn. Take the ball off the dribble. Keep, it, keep your dribble alive is what was the key to this play to be able to draw that contact. Gerald Houston called for the foul, his third. Two shots, gentlemen. Horn, three out of four from the line tonight. He came into this game having made his last 14 free throws. Two and a half minutes remaining here in Wichita. Western Kentucky down by five. And now four. Let's give it to Anderson, and it's across midcourt <laughs> before you can blink. He's dribbling with the ball about five or six feet in front of himself and running out and catching it, going through traffic. Tough pass, but they got it into Burdett. He was short with the shot. Born out of the scramble, travel. He didn't like the call, but Tom Penders was ready to make it for the officials. It was a good call. Mm -hmm. Texas up by four, 2.10 remaining. 
26 turnovers tonight for the Hilltoppers. Anderson, Tyler, Wrencher, Burdett, and Houston on the floor for the Longhorns. If you're a Western Kentucky fan, you need a good, solid defensive effort here. Not allow Texas to get the shot or get the offensive rebound. Burdett jumped out to the elbow and was wide open. He has 22. Excellent penetration once again by the guard play from Texas. Get the ball inside, force the defense to collapse, pitch it back out. Burdett has been hitting those shots all night. Albert is 14 points here in the second half. Under a minute and a half to go. Western Kentucky down by six. Horn, Fralix trying to cut the lead in half. Didn't get the bounce. It winds up right in the hands of Cephas Bunton, and he'll have a couple of free throws. Fralix has had a couple of chances to drill a three and get that lead down to three and hasn't been able to do it. Much to the chagrin of Derek Flowers and company on the Hilltopper bench. Timeout called by Texas. Houston and McIver of the Longhorns. Punton shooting two. This is the first. I mentioned earlier he's not a good free throw shooter at 45% for the year. Two out of five from the line tonight. And he missed both. And then he committed a foul as Tyler tried to break free from the pack. No, it really hurts that he can't shoot free throws well because he gets to the line a lot, 130 times, coming into tonight. And he's going to be in the game at, at critical times. And, you know, Ralph Willard has worked with him. His staff has worked with him, trying to get him to improve in that area. But it's just something that doesn't work for him. One and one opportunity. Tyler made the front end. He is eight.